Merch Minds Podcast, episode 130. My name is Glenn. This is Young. What's going on? What's who, up? Who, who, whose jersey you got on today? Uh, today, I got Hakeem the Dream. Hakeem oh, Olajuwon. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm trying to get a 10. Look how, like, uh, oh, man, this is horrible. I'm just like, once I don't even see a 10. I, I, I know. Once you go up my arm, I'm just like, yeah, this is going to take a while. I don't know. You I guys have to go outside. Do you guys have like a lake, like a like a lake that's nearby where you live, or because obviously there's no beach, but do you guys have like a lake or 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 like a stream where people go and? Uh, yeah, more like a stream, <laughs> but uh-huh. not really like a lake. But um, I don't even. I mean, I went. I go to the swap meet. I try to like just keep this and end up just getting really burnt. But I need to uh-huh. like really get this like like a good gold, golden brown color, almost like a corn dog. Ah, <laughs> corn dog. You want to be a corn dog? All right. <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with being a corn dog. Um, <laughs> cool, man. Um, yeah. Numbers. Oh, numbers. All right. What, numbers what's your last news? Give me your last seven days. All right. Uh, last seven days. Fifty-five products sold. Revenue nine twenty-nine. Estimated royalties one hundred sixty dollars and fifteen cents. That was a drop. Is that, yeah, is that that was, I think last time I was at like two. I was gonna say you were I in the two hundreds, like, right? Yeah, I think it was like in two hundreds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my last seven days, eighty-six products sold, uh, six returns, uh, product purchases, one thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars and eighty-nine cents. Estimated royalties, two thousand. No, I'm just joking. Three hundred and forty-one dollars and ninety-one cents. <laughs> uh, so a little increase from last week. So again, like if you guys been following the show, it's just it's a it's an up and down thing, right? It's it's consistently up and down, and uh, but I guess in the, in that sense, it's kind of balanced in the sense that when it does go up and down, it's consistent, right? Yeah, yeah. So well, let me ask you this. Are you doing any with these new uploads you're doing? Are you doing any of them like low priced to where they get a review and then you up the price again and then you up the price again when they get only on the standard shirts? Okay. Only but you are doing the... that method now. Well, no, I'm doing the method of where I price everything for a profit of a penny. Okay. okay. I don't care about the damn reviews or any of that. As soon as I get a sell, uh, I'm I'm upping the price to what it what it what it should be. Okay. Um, that uh, that's just again that's just my particular um, strategy at the moment. It can't you know it could change. You know my strategies changed in the past, um, but that's what I'm currently doing. Um, Is that I helped? mean, ah. Uh, I mean, am I? I mean, if if your question is, am I seeing a significant amount of sales on the new, on on the new designs that I'm posting? No. Uh, every now and then, I, I might get a new sale, uh, but a majority of it are the ones that that's already you know sold in the past. Okay. Um, but I've noticed. Uh, um, um, which is really unusual for this time of the year. I've been I've been selling a lot of hoodies. Hmm. Yeah, I've been in selling a lot of hoodies. Uh huh. In the middle of summer. Hoodies. Well, you have to think that it's it's even though it's summer, it's still breezy and cold somewhere in this country. That's true. Uh, well, even you guys that. sometimes that we need like a hoodie at night. Or no. Oh yeah, I mean even now, man, there's an overcast. It's the the Bay Area, man. This whole place is weird. Like yesterday was like a hundred degrees, man. I'm I'm sweating. My dog damn nearly died, and then today there's an overcast. It's weird. Um, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So I've been selling a lot of hoodies, um, and we do have more products now, right? We have what tank tops, the raglans. We have zip hoodies now, so uh, definitely a good inventory of products, different products to offer to customers. Um, that's obviously helping. Um, uh, so yeah, but but I have been uploading uh, pretty significantly the last couple of weeks. Okay. Um, so so that's you know again it's better than 
sitting around and not not doing anything. Uh, I want to try and keep updating everything. Um, let's talk about the latest news, the latest announcement that Amazon came out with on the seventeenth. Uh, uh, the the security code, uh, the security code to access your profile. Do you want to read that message? All right. To improve account security, starting today, we'll begin prompting for a security code when accessing, accessing profile bank and tax info within the My Account section of the Merch Portal. You can receive a security code through text message or voice call. Security codes will not be required to view other sections of the Merch Portal. So let me ask you, what does that tell you, Glenn? Maybe. Possibility. Yes, possibility could happen. Uh, um, I was talking to some people behind the scenes, and that to me almost sounds like sometime in the future, Amazon might let us use VAs uh, to upload our designs for us, but they can't access our personal information, right? Sen uh, sensitive information like our uh, uh, bank and tax info. Yeah. Um, so again, I don't know if that's going to happen. But that's what I'm speculating, and if that if that's true, um, I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about that. Here's the thing, too. I did notice that uh, after this message, uh, quite a bit of people got terminated. Oh, did you see that in the groups? I mean, a lot of people got terminated. I'm guessing because their tax info wasn't correct. I don't know if. That I mean, that's what people were putting in the comments that maybe had something to do with tax information um, as far as, like, I don't well, know. No, that doesn't sound right. No, uh, no, but it, it was like a, it was like a quite a bit of people right after this thing. Even no, came. that doesn't sound right. I mean, I mean, if, if I don't see Amazon terminating your account, I mean, if I accidentally put in, if I was off by one digit on my social security number, Right, and it was by accident. I don't see Amazon terminating me for that. Yeah. Um, I bet you they. There's, there's probably more to that story. I'm, I'm sure. It could be. Yeah, I mean, I I just saw what um, I guess what's going on in the groups, but a lot of people that randomly got terminated. So hmm. I don't know. Okay, interesting. Right. Uh, let's see. Been uploading onto KDP as well. Um, again, not as much as Merch. Um, I know Neil's uh, automation tool just recently came out. I, I still need to experiment with that, um, but it seems very straightforward. Did you see some knucklehead? Did you see this man? <laughs> uh, some dirtbag uh, <laughs> posted in a group. Oh. My account got terminated because I was using, uh, uh, you know, um, the book boat automator, right? Oh, I did and see it, that one. Yeah, and yeah, it I sent a whole, it sent like this whole shock wave of concern and everything through through um, all the groups, and then it comes out that the freaking whole post was fake. <laughs> so how how did did you uh, go into? And I'm, just, and I'm just I'm just like man, <laughs> why would you? This is what I'm talking. You you freaking trolls, man! <laughs> why don't you have anything better to do, man? Why would you waste your time to do something like that? I thought you're gonna say maybe he back with his own um like platform to promote after that. <laughs> uh, who knows, man? But it's <laughs> dumb. Oh, my account got terminated and it's dumb. You know, I was talking to Neil and all them behind the scenes and and Neil actually got the thumbs up from KDP mm, for, for nice. the for the for the automated uh, for the automation tool. Uh so yeah, it was just it was dumb, man. It's just <laughs> you trolls, you freaking idiots, man. Go Go, uh, go find a job or something, man. Because clearly this this line of uh, work isn't for you guys, um, idiots. Um, <laughs> let's see, um, Ken Real. Uh, if you guys are in his trademark watchdog group, um, uh, he's doing a contest. Uh, the person who submits the most uh, uh, letter of what do you call it? The letter of protest? Is that what you call it? Letter L L O P. Is that what you said? Yeah, the L O P. I think that stands for letter of protest. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong, um, <laughs> but anyway, he, they're having a they're having this great contest where um, uh, the person that submits the most will get a prize, and there's a bunch of prizes 
Uh, a lot of people are, 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 are donating prizes, including myself. Uh, so, um, um, and here's the thing, guys. Do it ethically, okay? Don't just find some random freaking uh, uh, trademark and just say, oh, I'm going to file a letter of protest. Letter of protest, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. okay, um, okay. Um, um, so, you know, be ethical, right? Um, don't just, again, just find some random phrases that you just want to uh, uh, try and get terminated. Uh, do be ethical. Um, it takes what a, about five minutes to submit one of these, um, and the person that submits the most uh, will get a prize. Um, again, um, I don't know what the prizes are. I can I know what my prize is, but I, I know a bunch <laughs> of other people are donating some other great prizes. So uh, please take the time to join the group and um, participate in the contest. Uh, great guest today. Okay, we had, um, we're going to talk to our good friend, Amy Nicholas. We had the privilege of meeting and talking with her, uh, what, what was it, September last mm -hmm. year in mm -hmm. Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, we had dinner with her. Um, she comes by the show. Um, she talks about everything from KDP to merge to, to hiring VAs. So let's talk to Amy. All right, guys, another great guest today. A really good friend of ours. We had the opportunity to meet her in person, the lovely Amy Nicholas. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So how's it how's it going? It's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, it's yeah. been going great. I think I was like half what I'm at now on merch uh, when I met you guys. <laughs> okay. So I went from 4K tier to 8K tier and quickly on my road to 10K. So. Wow, that's, that, that, that's 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 pretty good. It's a lot better than what what we're doing. Even though I've been uploading like a madman. Um, so give us a quick introduction. Um, um, obviously you're Amy, but um, tell us like where you're from, what you do, and uh... sure. So um, I've been doing print on demand for uh, let me think three and a half years, three three plus years. Um, I live in Florida. Sunshine State, love it. <laughs> Get to live the full dream here, uh, living where I want to live, thanks to you know online income, and um, just been doing merch uh, since 2000, August 2000. Oh gosh, 16. So we're wrapping uh, around the corner here, three years. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, been doing KDP print for a um, year and a half, I believe uh full you know full throttle with the journals and i'm also on t public red bubble etsy and amazon and shopify integration awesome so, so it sounds like you're doing multiple print on demand which is something that we've been preaching since day one because you never just want to be on merch even though it's the best platform out of all of them yeah you really want to diversify your platforms and that's what it seems like you're doing which is super smart yeah i totally agree i think um people get a little bit too you know gung-ho in the beginning <laughs> and they're like let me be on everything i don't recommend that strategy you know get on like merch get on kdp learn one and figure out you know how to do print on demand how to scale it and then start to branch out, you know, as soon as you can. But mm -hmm. try not to do like everything all at once because your efforts are just going to get scattered. Uh, trust me, been there, done that, <laughs> still doing that. Um, <laughs> just, just, just a uh, real quick. Where in Florida do you live? Uh, I live in a town called Saint Petersburg. It's part of uh, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Never been to Tampa Bay. Been to South Beach. Um, been to Key West, but never been. It's a completely different environment, uh, West Coast Florida to East Coast Florida. It's I definitely more laid back here. Um, okay. People are friendlier, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> There's way less traffic. <laughs> okay, I have to come visit one of these days. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Glenn, did you have any questions? Uh, what about content creating? So you're pretty much, I mean, this is daily then, right? Like Facebook Live? And... Almost, yeah. Okay. I've been doing... Uh, let's see, Facebook Lives, and now I go live on YouTube as well, if I can. Uh, I've been doing that since about April of last year. So I started doing it five days a week, and I did that for about eight months. And then now I'm doing it about three to four days a week. Oh, okay. I can't, I can't <laughs> imagine putting out content every day. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, 
Yeah, I would like to, I would like one. one out of stuff to talk about, but, <laughs> but but I mean you're you're obviously great at coming up with topics and stuff. I mean, look, it's a challenge enough for for, and I don't know about you, Glenn, but it's a challenge for me to even do the show, the Merch Mind Show podcast once a week. But you're doing it every day almost. Yeah, I mean, I just I don't know. I just get like ideas about what to talk about, and there's always people having problems with you know print on demand. There's always <laughs> solutions out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, there's, as long as people have problems, I'll keep making the show. <laughs> yeah, are there any like common problems as of like the last month or so that have been pretty consistent? Um, people are getting easily discouraged. You know, if they're new to print on demand, or like maybe they just got started on merch and they're at the low tier, and it's you know, and I say low, I mean anything like one thousand tier or below. It's um, it's a challenge because you guys know it's a lot different than couple years ago getting in um that the just getting past tier 10 i mean that's uh, you gotta really be sticking it out i mean one upload a day and yeah you got 10 slots it's gonna take some time you know <laughs> you know uh, the, the uh the best advice i can give um anyone that's beginning on merch is um just just keep like you said just upload every day um, but it's, I mean, if you're complaining now, imagine what we went through. Yeah. Remember, like in um, uh, the fall of 2016, when all, when everything was restricted. Yeah. We can we can even burp without even getting restricted. <laughs> I, it, it was nuts. Everything was restricted. Yeah. So for those of you guys getting started on merch now, you guys are lucky. I mean, it's it's much easier now than than what it was uh, uh, when I first got on because everything was restricted. It was nuts. No ads. Uh, yeah, no yeah. Ads, no no ads. No nothing. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, Glenn. So, so I think you you're gonna ask a question. Uh, oh, I did, did about the content. Okay, I <laughs> thought you had another question. Oh no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so, um, out of all the platforms. Mm-hmm. Which one do you enjoy the most? I mean, again, we know Amazon's sexy. That's where you're gonna make the <laughs> most money, right? Yeah. Uh, is it? I mean, is that your favorite, or do you have another particular platform that you prefer? Um, no, it's between KDP and Merch, and you know, some days it just depends how I am excited about one over the other, you know. But they're both great, so I just I enjoy checking my sales and, and logging. Been- You've been doing KDP too, uh, um, back in the days when, and this was about four years ago, um, I think, when everyone was jumping on the KDP wagon, hiring ghostwriters and all that mm-hmm. too, right? Yeah, I did right? ebook publishing for. Yeah, a years. And, and, yeah, and you did relatively good, right? Yeah, no, I did very well. Um, you know, and then things sort of changed with. Okay, how they pay us, what counts, can't do this, can do this. And so I was like, you know what? I want to just start something new and kind of have more control. So I went from that to doing Shopify and Facebook ads with print on demand. And so that was the start of my print on demand career. And I don't recommend that route because it's super challenging. (laughs) Um, It was tough not knowing print on demand at all and trying to put ads and trying to get people to my store. That was. You know, I, I hired coaches and stuff, but you know, I spent a lot of money trying to learn. <laughs> uh, trust me, I spend money all the time trying to uh, uh, learn learn new tricks and stuff, and, and it just it gets really overwhelming. And I and I'm all for paid content, but um, um, I'm 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 really really guilty of the shiny the the uh, what do you call it the shiny object syndrome. Yeah. Um, so I'm always bouncing around from one content to another, and it's just it's kind of really bad for me. Um, Glenn, did you have questions? So let's talk, I guess, about after that. I mean, did you keep going on the Shopify stuff, or you just completely changed into merch, or you still have it kind of in the background? Yeah, it's it's in the background. I don't run any ads right now, but I do get like organic sales pretty much every month on my one branded store. It's um, like a specific niche. And then I use that same store to uh, run the listings through my Seller Central account. So for print-on-demand products mm. that merch doesn't carry, you know, like towels or uh, mugs or something like that, we run those products through the back end of that store. Okay. But they're not like visible, you know what I mean, on my Shopify yeah. store. You can hide them and then just link your products to Seller Central. Mm. And then with print-on-demand, you're doing this full-time. So right. 
So what did you do before? I mean, did you like work like before a regular job? Or yeah. Did you, like, start? She was in corporate just like <laughs> everyone else, man. <laughs> yeah, I was an um, insurance auto appraiser. So I'd go out and look at wrecked cars and stuff. And it was it was a cool job. Um, I quit in 2015. In fact, uh, just a couple of days here, I'll be celebrating four years as an entrepreneur. Nice. And um, yeah, it was it wasn't so much the job or the task. It was like opening my eyes to something else out there. The fact that I could make my own money, I could have no ceiling on my income and I could be working passionately for something I really enjoyed, you know, instead of just work to make the buck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm in the same boat as you where, um, you know, and I talk about this openly and I, I feel like I'm a broken record, uh, but I talk about how, uh, so, you know, my ultimate goal is to walk away from my, my, uh, my day job, not because I hate it. You know, mm -hmm. I talked about the great relationship that I have with my boss and, and, um, um, her having been very supportive of me and, and, you know, over the years, but it's just, you know, I feel like, um, the challenge really is just to be your own entrepreneur and make a living, um, doing what you're passionate about right yeah definitely. and my th and my thing is you know what if that if i can at least attempt to do it and walk away from my job and it doesn't work out which i can always walk back i can always go back to my day job mm -hmm. right um might not be the same position but they're always hiring uh, yeah so uh so it's just something that i need to try and attempt and do uh before I pass away, right? Before yeah. I leave, before I leave this. <laughs> no earth. regrets, young. <laughs> yeah, no, because 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 I don't want to be in my death. No, you're right though, Amy. Because I, mean, I don't want to be in my deathbed, and you know, and I don't want to be like, oh, I wish I could have done that, or I wish I could have done this. You know, mm. just you know, I want to attempt to do something. If it doesn't work out, well, I know it didn't work out, and I'll just, you know, go back to my day job. You know, hey, guys, I'm <laughs> I'm back. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. So you know, I I completely understand um, um, why you left your job. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you know, going through my head, the thoughts were, it's going to work out. Like, I just know everything's going to fall into place. I'm not going to worry about two months from now, six months from now, a year from now, like, am oh. I making the same amount of money? You know, I wasn't worried about that at all. I was just like, I was so mentally ready. I had visualized myself doing what I wanted to do for so long that the next day when I was full-time entrepreneur after, you know, last day of work, it was like just the smoothest transition. It, mm. it was as if I was already living like that, you know, and I was like, cool, here we are. <laughs> yeah. And well, that, that's, I think, I think for you that, that, that's, that transition was probably easy because I know you're all about the mindset and all that. And you follow a lot of these people, which, I admit, look, I don't follow some of these gurus and stuff, um, but um, but I know there's a lot of people that do follow people like Grant Cardone and the Gary V's and stuff, and they talk, and they're really about the mindset. Did that did that help with your decision? Oh, and, 100%. And, and, and with the transition? Yeah, yeah. Because I would listen like when I was working for the job, I was listening to like audiobooks and podcasts and personal development stuff, like as much as possible. I drove a lot with a company car, so I. You know, when I was in the car listening and then I got really good at my job. So I was able to kind of plug in the headphones and go out and write my estimates, you know, for the cars and still be listening to something. Hmm. And for sure, it definitely helped my belief that I could do what others had done. And it wasn't going to be this impossible task. You know, there were some days I was like, man, <laughs> I don't know. I feel really far from being able to make the same money or a little bit more money. But then I just kept at it, you know, just kept believing it's going to happen. And then it did. So mm -hmm. who's your favorite out of all of them? Um, well, at, at the time I was listening, uh, to Jim Rohn, um, Grant Cardone and Jim Rohn's passed away, but he has, um, vi videos on YouTube. Jim Rohn. I, isn't, isn't he a sports guy? No, no, no. He was like a motivational business philosopher kind of speaker back in the day. He, oh, wow. he was actually Tony Robbins guru. Okay. Yeah. So those guys, I listen to Tony, I listen to um, Bob Proctor, but then like now I listen to like one or two people and that's it. And it's actually different, but I still credit, you know, learning a lot of the mental 
stuff, like the spiritual mental stuff from Bob Proctor, because I watched his YouTube videos and I said, you know what? I like this guy. I'm going to watch his online stream, right? He did a seminar. You could pay just to watch it online. And like things really shifted in my life within like a month. And after that, you know, and I was like, man, like I really understood more about the mind, more about um, what he calls like paradigms, like things that hold you back, you know, because you wake up in the morning and it's sort of like, all right, cool. I'm going to start working. Yeah, it's going to be like yesterday. All right, I'm going to eat the same food. I'm going to, you know, do the same things. And it's it's like a paradigm that keeps you at that level, you know, kind of like a thermostat. It's, it's you, you turn it, but it's always going to go back. You know, if you mm-hmm. open the door, uh, the heat gets in, you know, your thermostat comes down or goes up. And he's like, you got to break that paradigm because it's telling you that, you know, oh, this is how it's always going to be. You're not, you don't, you don't do any better than this. You know, in fact, you're doing worse. It's like, <laughs> it's like a little voice, you know? <laughs> wow, and wow. Uh, so he, he taught me about this stuff and I was like, oh my gosh, you know? And he's like, you can make what you make in, um, in a year. You can make that in a month. I was like, oh, okay. And then I'm like thinking, <laughs> Sure, <laughs> you know, let's let's go for this, you know. And I'm I'm telling you, man, things just really shifted when I was doing that ebook stuff uh, after uh-huh. listening to him. Yeah, so and then I got a chance to meet him in person a couple of times. I went uh, live to see his seminars in LA. So, oh yeah, wow, he's a cool dude, and he's 85 and rocking it. I mean, <laughs> him and wow. Tony Robbins need to do like a seminar standoff. <laughs> I've, been to, awesome. I've been to a Tony Robbins. Um, uh, seminar not not it it wasn't because um the only reason i went basically was because uh someone had an extra ticket and oh, i had nice. gone uh, and this is when he was here several years ago for the salesforce conference that they have up in san francisco every year and uh it was pretty interesting <laughs> I, I will say that it was it was very interesting um so let's talk about your 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 your, your process with merch um i know you're you pretty much outsource everything Right. A good chunk of it. Yeah. Like I still do my own uploads because of terms of service and them wanting just me and my account. But the day they turn that admin access on, <laughs> I will no longer <laughs> upload squat. Uh, so yeah. Well, let's my... talk about that real okay. quick because yeah. Amazon just came out with an announcement. Uh, uh, was it last week? Last... Yeah. With the security. About the security. And I was talking to some people behind the scenes, not anyone from Amazon Merch, but we were just kind of speculating, why would they do something like that? Mm -hmm. And we're kind of speculating, maybe they might open up uh, something for your VAs. I mean, I I would imagine. Yeah, I'm I'm like 99.9% sure that's going to happen in the next few months, hopefully before Uh Q4. That would be (laughs) the best option. Glenn, what do you think about that announcement? I think that's where they're headed. We don't know when, so? but I think it's that's where it's heading for sure. Uh-huh. It seems because like it, they're modeling it after Seller Central, kind of right. They gave mm-hmm. us AMS ads. Um, you know, sure. they're adding bulk product stuff now, and I think that's just the next logical step. There's no rhyme or reason why they would give you 800 or a thousand uploads a day and these huge tier limits, and then say, "Okay, you do everything. Good yeah. luck." <laughs> Oh, you yeah, know? Right. <laughs> and, and, and trust me, I'm 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 still a one man show, and it just it's 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 overwhelming. You mm-hmm. know, I talk to people behind the scenes, and and you know they laugh, and you know they poke fun because you know, um, it, you know because I'm 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 a one man show. But at some point, I do realize I have to hire a VA. But um, so so you pretty much so you do all the uploading. Um, you obviously hire now. Do you hire people? to 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 uh uh do your not do your listing but write the listings yeah so my va she's been very well trained um understanding how to write titles descriptions bullets because i hired her when i started to shopify several years ago and she was actually helping me also manage my ebooks at the time so she's familiar with amazon you know okay. did some training update hey here's how to do it we just do it in a google sheet and then i just copy and paste from there. From the Philippines? Yep, from the Philippines. Okay. And how about designers? How many designers do you have? I have two uh, full-time designers and, uh, you know, been through them all. <laughs> uh, some people are like, oh, how'd you find such good designers? They're reliable. And then I'm like, you got to go through some duds first, you know. Yeah. Pay your dues. <laughs> yeah, I think learn, that's the way to go. 
hiring people. I think that's uh, the way to go at this point, man, because it's yeah. just it's too hard to scale being a one man show. Uh, I, I mean, I know Glenn's openly talked about how he hasn't even touched merch because, uh, well, because it hasn't performed for him um, yeah. um, like it has in the past. Now, Glenn, let me ask you, right? Let's say tomorrow Amazon comes out and says, okay, you guys are allowed VAs. Would you hire a VA or are you still in that whole, because you're kind of like me because, you know, you're that one man operation. Um, I mean, I'm not really discouraged about like, Amazon period. I'm just so busy doing other things that are making money for me that I just have to go oh, all no, that, that. That's exactly I mean, what I just said. And so, but, it, yeah. So, um, so would you so would you hire a VA in that case? Um, I don't know. Probably. I mean, I would really have to sit and think about it, and and uh -huh. and that's a lengthy process as well. I mean, just like we talked about. I mean, even finding the right VA and doing all the steps to do that correctly. Um, I would have to figure out. I'm more of like a time. Thing on me more than anything so I, I probably not right now no no yeah i think a lot of people would be in that boat young they just they're scared to uh relinquish control and maybe that's how you feel i don't know no that's true you know i yeah. think a lot of it also at, at least for me personally um it kind of, it kind of comes from my dad it's funny because um you know i talk about my dad in the past um you know he he, he was a small business owner um, for the life of him, the guy, he wouldn't hire any employees. Like he just, like he didn't trust people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then if you know, if a mistake was made, he just gets upset and he gets all pissed. And and I think I kind of carry that trait from him because I mean, the guy would work some serious long hours, and I'm like, pops, you gotta fucking hire somebody, man. <laughs> um, but I, th but I think I have the same mindset as him. It's just you know, he's just. You know, it's not, uh, I don't think it's a trusting, but it's, I think it's more of a, you know, if there's a mistake made, um, mm -hmm, the like I said, my, my dad was the type of person where he just gets really pissed. You know, he had a pretty bad temper. Mm -hmm. um, um, and uh, uh, I think that's what it was. But, um, uh, but yeah, no, I do know that hiring VAs is really important. And, you know, that's something that I need to do at some point. Um, well, think about it like as if, not, you know, because some people get held back by spending money. Some people get held back by fear of control and things going wrong or, hey, they're slower. Um, but what risk are you accepting then? Because you're basically like, I will make less money and I will work more. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point, yeah, it's it's kind of like the, the snowball effect, because when you start out, you hire somebody, you're spending money. They're not making you any money yet. You know, sure. you got to get to that point where you've outsourced it properly enough that they bring in, you know, enough value to the table that your business starts to grow, you make more profit. And if you're not doing that at any stage, you're going to fall behind at some point, you know, because other people are, they're going to keep growing. You can only work 24 hours a day and not even that, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, well, you know, again, me personally, also, you know what I, you know what I think it is. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I did the whole ebook publishing back, you know, yeah. three, four years ago mm -hmm. uh, when it was just popping. Um, and uh, you know, I would go to the whole process of hiring a ghostwriter, um, and you would see all these people, you know, with with, with the, you know, with a profile that that screams that they're qualified. And you end up hiring them, and then and then the return product when you read it, it's like freaking Doctor <laughs> Seuss uh, uh, had a stroke and smoking crack when, when he wrote it. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is this, man? Uh, I, and, and I, I have a philosophy what... around that that might help you. It's like, it's hire fast and fire fast. You know, okay. as soon what as you mean? sniff like that, they're not trustworthy. The their work is crap. They borrowed it from the internet. <laughs> Just fire them right away. Uh, okay. I've wasted a lot of money trying to keep people on, trying to train the untrainable. And I just learned my lesson that, you know, you got to go through some people, you know, there's, there's some little sneaky shortcuts you can do as far as like job profiles and things like that, okay. um, that you because can of, test of, people. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. so so there's a whole process to it. Yeah, just like everything else, you just got you just got to be patient and uh, exactly uh, just, just go to the system. Okay, I got you. Then don't yeah. give up. You know, instead of thinking like what's the worst that could happen, you know, think about mm. the best. Like maybe you find somebody yeah. who just makes your life easier. You know. Well, I, I mean, you know, I guess technically I do have a couple of VAs. I mean, you know, I have a couple of local kids designing for me, um, and um, I'm. I'm I'm more than happy with the quality of work that I'm getting from them, mm -hmm. um, but that but that's easy, right? Because I know who they are, they're 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 local. Mm -hmm. I can talk to them. I you know, it's a little um, different. It's a little different. It's just yeah. again, it's hiring overseas. That just that's really nerve wracking, and you know, and 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 you know, and and we we had a whole episode about this, right? Glenn and I we. We talked about how Fiverr is a bad marketplace to hire someone, <laughs> and and then when people disagreed, uh, we had a guy who who openly lied about being a graphic designer. You know, ha we had him on the show, and oh, um, wow. you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> so. He quickly found out, or <laughs> no? Did you did you not ever hear that episode? Did no, you? I didn't. Sorry. Oh man, it it was nuts. So if you go back a couple of years ago, uh, Glenn and I, we you know we would just just I mean, we're, we're like anti fiber um, and uh, uh, we extended an open invitation to anyone who who sells a, you know services on Fiverr as a designer to come on the show. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, this guy says, oh, I'll come on the show. I'll talk about it. Right. And sure enough, everything that we we said was was, was exactly mm -hmm. true because he was lying about his portfolio he lied about him being a graphic designer wow. um and you know i'm i'm not gonna mention his name but you know the guy still he's still in the community oh, no. he's he still <laughs> sells his products and services um but again it's not my responsibility to expose who he is but i'm just saying uh yeah. you know there's people out there that you know that's like him and i think that's what really discouraged me um, as far as trying to uh, uh, hire well, real, stay away real from talented. Fiber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I use Upwork, and um, you know I think they've put some guidelines in place now. They do background checks a little bit. They do a phone number check. Um, you kind of have to get a little bit of an established history on there for your profile to even show visibly. Um, they have to take some tests, you know, like English tests and spelling, and, you know, maybe a, a design test if that's what they're trying to um, pose themselves as. And then you can, you know, you can browse through their stuff. Of course, they might be uploading stuff that's not theirs portfolio, <laughs> but you'll quickly learn. You know, what I do is I give them a test. I say, hey, make me two or three designs. Here's the example maybe to look at for some inspiration or uh, just give them an idea. And if it's the first couple ones are terrible, <laughs> it's probably not going to get better from there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you can, I mean, you can kind of coach people a little bit, like if they give you some weird colors or, Hey, that font's not great. But if they don't understand how a shirt design should look, they just shouldn't be doing graphic design for shirts. I mean, there's a big difference, you know, there's a big difference between logo design Website design, graphic design for shirts is all oh, yeah. different. Yeah. 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 And I think I think also um I don't know, keeping on someone like you said more than I guess longer than what they should be, I mean mm -hmm. makes no sense. But I think also when you have your own business, you also have to keep in mind that the person you hire, I mean, you can't expect them to care just as much as you do on your own yeah. business. Like they're they're working for you. They want to help you, of course, and hopefully, you know, they're the right worker for you and you're paying them well and they enjoy that, what they do, but they're not going to care about the bigger picture like you will. Um, yeah. That's what happens to a lot of people. I see them get frustrated with like whoever they hire or the worker because of that, like little mess ups here and there, but yeah. mess ups are going to happen. Well, it's up to you to, you know, inspire them to care more, um, whether that's pay raises, whether that's like, hey, um, here's some, here's a bonus for the week or uh, even just words of appreciation, you know, Hey, you did a really good job on that design. Um, it sold right away. I really appreciate it. Uh, keep at it, you know, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people just want a little, little kindness yeah. in their life. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, like, like, like the, like the two kids, um, um, that I've, that I've hired, um, during Christmas time, uh, you know, I I remember I remember I don't remember whose group it was. Someone had posted a poll or, or a question. Oh, 
uh, how much, you know, do you guys uh, uh, give your uh, designers any bonuses and, and people were putting, oh yeah, I gave my designer like a $20 bonus or a $5 bonus. I gave my designers, both of them, a $200 bonus during Christmas time. Yeah. Um, and like people I said, I mean, remember that the next I, year, right? I personally, <laughs> and Glenn, you know me, man, I've said this how many times now, I don't have a problem spending money, but it's just, again, going through the process of finding the right person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, yeah, so maybe this is something that I should reach out to you and you can maybe coach me and, uh, and help me find the right yeah. VA because, uh, at least for, you know, the, the process that I've been through, it, it was just, it wasn't very <laughs> satisfying. Yeah, we've all, we've all been through the nightmare. <laughs> we've all been there. We've all been down the horror street. You know, I had in the beginnings, um, some VAs that had just, if you can think of a crazy reason, they had it. My cat died. Uh, we got a typhoon. I got typhoon. Sick. That's a big one uh, in the Philippines. Yeah. Well, and it, it is true. Like they do it's get true. hit a lot. It, they do get hit, but it's you know. Then the next week, it's the malaria or something. You know, it's like uh -huh. some crazy <laughs> excuses. Yeah. And those yeah. people that yeah, consistently give a you know excuse, then you know, okay, they're not really dedicated, and you just sure. fire fast. You know, move on. Huh? We're, those are great words of advice, um, Amy. Thank you. Uh, I know you're out in Florida again. You're what three hours ahead, so yeah. Um, there's a, there's a big time difference here. So I'll let you go. Uh, Glenn, any final thoughts or comments before we let it go? Um, maybe you just want to, I know you said that people are getting a little discouraged. Anything you want to, uh, I guess, any words of advice for the ones that are, let's say in between like two to 4,000 tier. They've, they've gone, you know, they've gone above the rookie stuff, but mm -hmm. they're kind of stuck in the middle. Yeah. I mean, spread your wings a little bit if you feel uh, sort of stuck with merch, if you're full or you're waiting for that tear up, you know, maybe get on KDP, maybe start putting your stuff on Etsy, get ready for Q4. You know, it's like 99 days away. It's not that far. Um, and I would say just be grateful for where you are. A lot of people would kill to be at the 2000 tier, you know, they're yeah. at tier 10. They can't even like picture that happening yet. There's so good just, money to be made on the 2000 tier, seriously. Yeah, I mean, you have a decent amount of slots by then. Yeah. Cool. Well, Amy, thanks again. And yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll talk soon. Again, I want to pick your brain more, and uh, uh, we'll definitely uh, I'll, I'll uh, tune in the next time you go live. I know I like to tune in every now and then and ask for my, 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 my typical prize. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Awesome show and went super smooth and someone that's doing it full time. So we can definitely appreciate that full time print on demand, full time print on demand. Unfortunately here, that won't cut it. <laughs> it's, just too damn, it's too damn expensive here, man. It's too, it's too crazy up here. Um, but yeah, no, she's um, definitely uh, uh, living the life that she wants, which is good, right? I mean, anytime, anytime you can do what you what you're passionate about, that's that's always uh, that's always the best lifestyle to uh, to live. Um, what's going on with you, though, man? Uh, right now, just trying to, uh, I mean, get through editing, getting all the videos out, YouTube, and same uh, same thing like sneaker stuff, getting those sales in, and. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much my main my main stuff right now. What about FBA? Are you still doing that? Yeah, FBA, that's still going good. Um, I do need to send in, hopefully this week I can send in. Um, I got some backpacks and shoes and stuff to send in. So definitely got to do that uh, later on this week. So I was waiting for some some poly bags to come in. Totally forgot about it. Who them. are you getting your poly bags from? Uh, I just get them from eBay because they have the warning okay. labels already on them. So I don't have to like figure that out. But uh -huh. it's supposed to come in, I think, on Wednesday. So I think I just want to wait for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh, – I'm, I'm sure that a lot of the listeners don't – they probably don't even know what you're talking about. But um, <laughs> when you resell products on Amazon FBA, um, some particular products, you have to poly bag them in clear plastic uh, uh, um, package, I guess, if, if that's what you call it. Um, with uh, warning labels of suffocation and all that stuff, there Amazon's very, very particular about stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Thinking about getting back into it, man. Am I thinking, thinking about, about it? 
Or are you, no, are, are me. You thinking I'm thinking about, thinking about it, man. Oh, I'm thinking okay. about. I miss it. I miss it. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm still doing the local sales, but uh, I, I do miss the whole FBA uh, grind. Um, but uh, I got to look at some flights. So we'll do. We can do a uh, me and you garage sale video. Dude, I'm down, man. I I still go to garage sales. People people don't believe me, but I still go to garage sales. <laughs> don't believe me, dude. Nick Eden called me not too long ago on the Saturday morning because uh, remember he's three hours ahead. Yeah, and uh, he was kind of, he was surprised that I, that I uh, that I was up, and uh, he goes, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Man, I'm heading up to garage sales, man." There we go. I, I, I still hit him up, man. I still hit <laughs> him up. Um, you know that the whole thing about me having quit quitting uh, reselling that's not true. All right. I think that'd be a cool video. So, but, we gotta, I think, right. but yeah, I if you, yeah, if if you want, if you do, I'm totally down, dude. I'm totally down. Uh, you know, I still go to garage sales. Through, th I, I admit though, uh, thrift stores I haven't gone in a while. Oh, okay, no, it makes sense. <laughs> so, um, but cool, man. Good show. Um, uh, and then uh, what? Next week we'll talk. Yes, sir. Next week. So we'll see you. Oh, all right, man. All right.